Obviously, I am not at Thunder Valley right now. I tried to record this video like five times. Everything was messed up every single time. Audio, video, it was stupid. That's why it's been a couple weeks. But I thought I'd at least sit down and let you know how the weekend went because it was almost really, really good. So first off, I didn't really vlog the weekend because I wanted to focus on the racing part of it just to see because the last time that I did that, the only time I've ever done that at a pro national, not vlog it, I qualified. So I figured I'm going to do that again. I'm going to see how it goes and I'll talk about it afterwards. So that's what I did. So to start from the beginning, I was originally planning on running Hoosier tires at the national because I, I tested them out. I was going to make a video on them. I'm glad I didn't because when I showed up at Lakewood at Thunder Valley, Hoosier wasn't there. I didn't have Hoosiers on my race bike and I had very worn out Hoosiers on my practice bike. So that wasn't an option. We ended up parking right next to Pirelli. I, and, I, and I didn't want to run Dunlops because I've tried other tires and I've realized that me and Dunlops just don't mix very well. So we ended up parking right next to Pirelli, got to know the guys, and that's what I ran. I ran Pirelli's, I ended up really liking them. Uh, I ran a scoop tire in first practice and then just the normal mid soft tire from then on out for the rest of the day because first practice, it wasn't, it wasn't really deep, wasn't super watered. Everybody was saying that they prepped the track different, but from what I experienced, it was about the same as previous years. But the scoop ended up working really well for first practice, so I'm glad I chose that. And I guess I should say this, that I'm sure you guys have heard AMA sanctioned events now, you can't run a GoPro on your helmet, which is a, a big bummer. I wish that they would allow you to just sign a waiver or something so that you could use it. I rigged up this kind of janky setup behind my front number plate. I got a handlebar mount and I hung it upside down from where you bolt your front number plate onto your triple clamps. So it was, I couldn't adjust it up or down. So I had to cut a hole out in the middle of my eight that kind of made it look like I was running number 106. So that was that was not ideal. And I hated the camera placement too, watching it afterwards. You can see part of the number plate on the outside and you just can't really see a ton of what's going on. But I didn't want to wear a chest mount, so that was the best option. I might wear a chest mount now, seeing how bad that footage was. So first practice I go out and it's pretty much the best I've ever felt at a national. All, here, here's some footage from first practice real quick. get much arm pump was able to put down and what I felt were really really good laps there was a step up before the mechanics area if you watch the race you saw that there was a single before it and for first practice it was really big they ended up shaving it down and it had some mud afterwards and that had some weird ruts and on my best lap I got kind of messed up and I didn't do the step up and that's really upsetting to me because that would have been, it still was my fastest lap, but it could have been even faster. I went back and compared the GoPros from corner to corner, from the corner before it to the corner after it to see how much I lost. And it actually wasn't as much as I was expecting. It was only about a half a second. And I think that's because the step up was so big and having that single before it, 
you couldn't get over it, so you would just land on top and bounce, and it would take so much speed away that actually singling it and then scrubbing it and getting a good drive off of the landing wasn't that much slower than just going for it. But still, I would have been about a second, under a second off of qualifying if I would have been able to do that. Oh, I guess, spoiler alert, I qualified 42nd. And seeing how the track was, I knew that second practice was not gonna be faster. So I just went out, tried to find some lines, see if I could ride hard without getting arm pump, and I did. This has never happened before where all of my fast laps in second practice were the same. Normally, I get one lap hard and then I have gnarly arm pump and I can't do more laps at that same speed. But at Lakewood this time, second practice, I was able to at least get every single fast lap was the same. It was all within a second of each other. So that was a that was a huge positive. Like I said, this is the best I've felt in qualifying at a national in a very long time. Here is some footage of second practice. Again, the footage sucks, but here you go. <laughs> So I qualified 42nd, so I had to go to the LCQ. Uh, top 36 goes straight into the motos. At this point in the day, it was starting to get very hot, and I was wearing all black for practice, which looked awesome. The all black active gear, I was wearing a black helmet with black boots. It looked really cool, but it was really hot. So I changed into some white active gear, which still looked awesome uh, for the LCQ. I got a really good gate pick. I was sixth gate pick. I got exactly where I wanted to go because I learned my lesson from last year in the LCQ where I could have gotten the whole shot if I was further inside. Exactly where I wanted to be. My practice starts in second practice were awesome. I had a ton of confidence that I was going to get the whole shot, but I ended up getting a terrible start. I got a little bit flustered because the guy with holding the board didn't do it quite right. So normally it's like they hold one minute, then they go to 30 seconds, and they go sideways, and he walks off. This time he just had the 30-second board up, and then he just walked off. So I wasn't in gear. I wasn't anything. So I saw him walking off, and I'm like, ah, put it in gear, looked at the gate, and the gate dropped. So I, I just wasn't ready for that. I'm super bummed. I really wanted the GoPro for this, but as you can see, the lens got destroyed. And I don't know if this contributed or not, but the footage from the LCQ is corrupted. And I can't, I, I don't have it. I don't have it. It just doesn't show up on the computer or nothing. I can't get it to show up. And I'm super upset because my first half a lap was insane. Like I said, I got a bad start. I was in like 15th going through the first corner and I went kind of psycho and I almost killed myself a couple times just like coming down the downhills and stuff. <laughs> very, very sketchy. And I wish that I had the footage of it. But I don't, and I'm very, very, very upset. But halfway into the first lap, I get into like sixth, and I was feeling really good. I was like, dude, I can totally get top four. If not, I can stay in this sixth spot and be an alternate. And then... <laughs> Uh, so you know the corner where Tomac and Stewart both fell and wadded themselves. You go right, you do that little jump, and then it's a tight left-hander. On the inside, there's a, there's a little hump. There's a tiny single, but it's just big enough where you can't see the ruts on the other side of it. It shouldn't have been that much different than second practice, but 
I went into it way, way too fast. And as I came over the single, the ruts hooked way tighter than I was expecting them to. So I went in, I hit the rut and it just stood my bike up and I'm like tiptoeing, crawling through the rut, trying to get my bike leaned back over so I can go. And I get smashed from behind by another dude. It's like 90% my fault going that slow through the rut, but I put some blame on him because I've had riders in front of me stand their bikes up and I don't just smash them going wide open. Like my bike flew out from underneath me. I thought he went to the outside with how much speed he had to hit me, but whatever. I get up, I'm pissed. I start yelling and then I look back and the kid's like kind of in a fetal position on the ground. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll just we'll pick my bike up and go. I won't yell at this kid. He's hurt or something. I don't know. Uh, bars were a little bit tweaked, but I was just pissed because this is how LCQs go for me. If you've been watching my vlogs for a while, I've never had a good LCQ in my entire life. So this was par for the course. Pretty normal for me. I just thought, whatever. Let's do these four laps as good as I possibly can. See what I can get up to. I got up to like 15th. I felt okay. I started getting a tiny bit arm pump towards the end. Mostly I just got really, really hot. I do not do good with heat. And that was the biggest thing. But my lap times didn't really drop off in the LCQ, which was a, that was a plus. The lap times weren't quite... I think, looking at lap times, I think I could have been around sixth. And you never know, without falling, without getting out of my groove, with those top guys, I could have maybe gotten a top four. And for that, I'm pretty bummed that that's how my LCQ went. And that was the end of my day. Again, I didn't qualify, but this year is not as serious as previous years which is maybe why I felt better because I'm not as stressed but yeah that's how my day went so we just uh we watched first motos of the the main motos I got some footage of that I'll put at the end then we packed up and we went home don't live that far away I came back to this apartment here it's like half an hour from the track passed out on the couch it was pretty nice Sorry it took two weeks to make this video. Like I said, I tried multiple times and just the whole setup was jacked. So, but like I said, I got some footage of first motos that I'll put in right after this. Uh, I also am about to make another video explaining what I'm doing for the rest of this season. But yeah, I'll see you in that video because I'm literally about to record it. Uh, here's that footage and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.